Welcome to the Fun Astrology Podcast, October 24th, Monday, Monday, the last Monday of October. And there might be something significant happening in the sky this week. Oh, yes. Tomorrow, of course, the eclipse. Hi, Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a heavy sky and a lot to talk about for this last week of October. Now, there's not much going on in the sky right now, but tomorrow is when the fireworks begin, and we are going to be talking about fireworks because we do have an eclipse. Tomorrow morning at 6.48 a.m. Eastern Time is what the Honeycomb Collective says. Now, I have my chart set to Greenwich Time. In fact, this comes from when Robert and I recorded uh, one of the Old Soul, New Soul episodes on this, and that is set to 11.49 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So the eclipse on the East Coast will peak at around 6.48 this is a partial solar eclipse, and it will not be visible in the United States. So most of this audience is U.S.-based. Where will it show up? Well, that's a great question. It is centered over Russia. It will be visible, highly visible, across South America and Europe, but it will not be visible in the United States. What has one thing that I'm just watching is... With everything going on in the world right now, this solar eclipse in Scorpio in October is going to be centered right basically in the middle of Russia. Let that sink in. All right, back to the time. If you could see it, it would begin around 5 a.m., 4.58. Then we have that peak just shy of 7 o'clock. The whole show will be over and closed and gone by 9.02 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, as I mentioned, the sun and the moon will conjoin for a new moon in Scorpio at 2 degrees 0 minutes. The sun and Venus, also very key in this eclipse, moved into Scorpio early, early Sunday morning. The moon goes void, of course, this evening at 8.35 p.m., and then it enters Scorpio tomorrow morning at 3.18 a.m. Now remember, so moon moves in. This is so close to the border of Scorpio, the cusp of Scorpio, that the moon moves in at 3.18, meeting the sun and Venus, all sitting there at 2 degrees. And then the peak of the eclipse is at 6.48 a.m. So this is very much an early Scorpio, three-planet, Sun, moon, new moon, and Venus, all at two degrees Scorpio. Now, right there, we know that Scorpio in any kind of even cookbook astrology is all about deep, passionate, and can be fiery, the tale of the scorpion. In fact, those of you who have deduced that why is Scorpio even a water sign? It was originally ruled by Mars. And if you've ever been around one of us, you know that it's a Mars-driven fire sign <laughs> that just happened to get relegated to water. It's the fire water sign. And that is very true for this eclipse because there is a lot of tension built into this as we talked about, by the way, on Old Soul, New Soul, we dedicated three episodes to this eclipse. They are probably about, I'm guessing, 20 episodes back, but you can very easily scan through and find the three eclipse episodes in Old Soul, New Soul. Now, one of the areas that this thing is going to be challenged is that Mars is in Gemini and is in the seventh house. And I'm actually looking this morning at a whole sign chart, which is the house system that I do the podcasts in. And the whole stellium of sun, moon, Venus, along with the south node, are all in Scorpio in the twelfth house. Mars, the god of war, is in the seventh house, the shadow of which is conflict. I tell you this not to be on the negative side of this eclipse, but I want you to be at least be aware that there is, there's the tension. There is the conflict built in. 
Mars, also at 25 degrees Gemini, is in a close enough square to Jupiter, sitting now right at the border in retrograde, getting ready to cross from Aries back into Pisces. Neptune is at 23 degrees in Pisces. There's another square to Mars. And Pluto in Capricorn at 26 degrees, now moving direct, is also in a direct square to the Sun, Moon, and Venus. So those are your players. That's how this is set up. Now, if you've listened to this podcast for any length of time, you know that we've talked in the past about the relevance of eclipses. I mean, at, at just the core, this is a new moon. It's a new moon cranked up, and it's a popularized new moon because everybody wants to talk about eclipses. But then you come back and you say, do eclipses really make that much difference? Well, if you ask a financial astrologer, just go ask Ray Merriman if eclipses make a difference. <laughs> he would chuckle just like that. I went back and looked over the weekend. I did a little bit of study here, and I pulled some past Scorpio Taurus eclipse dates. And this takes us back to 2013 and 2014. And this is where I think I'm going to eat my sock on my position on eclipses. Because the, the Scorpio Taurus last time this happened is when I got a very clear intuitive prompt filling up my water bottles one day to go on a bicycle ride to email this author by the name of Fred Dodson and see if he would be interested in me narrating his audiobooks. That was over 30 audiobooks ago that began in 2013. And it completely changed my life, and it makes it possible for me to do what I'm able to do here every day. So I think I'm going to change my tune on these eclipses. As we've mentioned before, is tomorrow likely to be some explosive day? Now, chances are not. Could something happen under the shadow or under the after effect of this eclipse? A lot of people say they go three, six, nine months on down. It did for me back then, and it completely, totally changed my life. For the positive, so let's don't get all down on the fact that it's in Scorpio. Look at what happened to me almost 10 years ago. Completely changed the trajectory of my life. That's the power that has returned. I hope that takes a lot of the tension and the negativity and puts a positive spin on it because that's how I would like to leave you. We will talk about it more tomorrow, but I wanted to set the stage today especially because it was so early in the morning. I love you guys. Have a great one. Don't fear this eclipse. Set intentions for good things to come into your life. See you tomorrow.